One big thing that I've noticed when doing the show is that when people decide to get into business for themselves, the people that get into a business to where they're able to offer a service to take care of things that most of us don't want to do, don't have time to do, or certainly don't have the intellect or the equipment, quite frankly, to do it as well as a professional, those people are gonna do okay. And that's exactly where we are today. The name of the business we're chatting with is Carpet Express, Carpet Cleaners. There are carpet expressions. Excuse me there, Paul. Paul Robinson, my guest. Paul, how are you, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great, thank you. I got to tell you, I love that name, Carpet Expressions. You come up with that yourself? Yes, sir. <laughs> is there a story there, or did it just hit you immediately? No, actually, this is my second carpet cleaning business. Uh, the first one was called Our Carpet Renewal. And I just, I didn't want to be normal i wanted to be different and hey you know what it makes you stand out i think that's a great name so yeah. before we got into the carpet business back it up just a little bit because i got a kick out of reading your story if you could tell us about your career prior to owning your own business specifically the time you spent with kirby vacuum cleaners and maybe how indirectly that got you where you are today yeah um i was a salesman for kirby in savannah georgia um, I learned pretty quickly that I was not a salesperson. But <laughs> what I did learn is I loved cleaning the carpet. I loved making the people happy. Um, so I pretty much left Curry, but I had one. And I, in New York, I started doing you know carpet cleaning door to door, suit and tie. You know, I wanted to be I wanted to be different from everybody else. Um, but after that. You know, it's kind of hard to clean carpet all the time with just a Kirby. So I had I, I decided to, to go a different route and went into truck driving. Truck driving? Yeah. So you're truck driving, you spent a lot of time on the road. Did you have a lot of time to think of your next business opportunity? <laughs> I actually started my trucking company. <laughs> um, I started on the big trucks, you know, as, an owner, as, a, as a, uh, a lease operator. And then I got tired of that. So. I partnered up with a fellow in Savannah, Georgia, and we started a hotshot company. And I, I uh, transported oversized loads from New York State, New York City, all over the country, uh, boats, um, cargo trailers, anything really. And uh, t four years ago, we had major, major, major bad breakdowns. And it pretty much bankrupted us. I mean, it was almost a hundred thousand dollars in a two month period. So I just, uh, it was just too much. So, uh, I had to decide what I was going to do next. I had a little ideas here and there. I thought, well, maybe I'll be a bartender. Maybe I'll go back to school for automotive and help, uh, other truck drivers out there. And in the end, I got stuck into serving. I learned customer service really well there. And, you know, COVID happened, so we were all, nothing happened there. And I got back into serving and I just kind of got tired of working for somebody else and making somebody else rich. So I just, one day I said, baby, I, I have my Kirby. Um, why don't I start my carpet cleaning business back up? And she's like, okay. And that's what happened. We went down and did another business license and started fresh. And there you go. Well, and it's it's uh, you know car carpet is in the name obviously, but it's not just carpet cleaning. You you clean pretty much any surface. Is that fair enough? Um, almost yeah, yeah. And not just yeah. the surfaces, but upholstery and draperies. Do you do that too? We do not do draperies. Um, we do upholstery, uh, tile and grout. Um, porches i just started getting slowly into the, the pressure washing um but i, I mean I, all the new things that that are out there i have to learn and i don't jump into it i learn it first um like in the 20 year period a lot of things changed in, the, in just the basic carpet cleaning um chem the chemicals changed the chemistry was always there but i didn't know about that the first time so I, I had to I had to really research it and learn, and uh, I went on to YouTube and I found a, a gentleman named Corey T, and I watched his his YouTube channel and it was Carpet Muscle TV, and that's where <laughs> I learned. that <laughs> yeah, Carpet Muscle TV is pretty cool, and I learned pretty much 
everything there is to know about how to clean everything on a carpet. All the stains, the new technologies there are now. Um, and I owe a lot, a lot of my education to him and uh, what he does. Um, and when I bought my, I bought two types of machines. I have hot water extraction, which I, I don't like it, never have. <laughs> I feel more comfortable cleaning upholstery with hot water technology than uh, I, I, I'm mostly very low moisture. I, I like it because it, it, it cleans, it deep cleans, uh, and it dries within an hour. It's usually dry even before I'm leaving the house. And I love that technology. People get to see it and they're, they're just amazed. They're like, it's dry already? It's like, yeah, you can walk on it. And another thing I like about the, the low moisture is I don't have wicking problems. Stains don't come back, like without hot water extraction. You know, a few times with somebody vacuuming, their stains come back. And that's just because of all that water they stick in the carpet. I just can't stand that. Paul, Paul, have you found out since you've become your own man, your own business owner, like you always wanted to be, you obviously dove right in and learned a lot on the technical side of things, but have you found that your other parts, other things you've done in your life have helped you with the client relations side of things and how important is that to your business? Yes, my serving, oh my goodness, because you, I, have, I had to deal with different walks of life and that really helped me a great deal. Um, the truck driving, again, customer service. You know, when I told somebody I was gonna be there, I was there just customer service, I believe, is number one. If when I when I first meet the person, really I don't get to meet them until the actual door knocking. Uh, the rest of the time it's either text messages because I need to see everything because of you know COVID. Um, so I need to I need to see the, the the rooms, the carpet, the whatever I'm cleaning. And but then when I meet them at the door is where the selling starts. I have to sell myself to them. So I, in the first two minutes I have to make them feel comfortable because I'm, I'm coming into their home and they don't know me and the first time I'm, I'm bringing all these this equipment in to clean their carpet so they, uh, customer service is probably number one over everything as far as uh, you know that part the, the, the non-technical side well, when, yeah, when you're in any type of a service industry, of course, it sounds so try, but it's absolutely true. The customer service part is so critically important, particularly when you're focused on something like someone's home, because for most of us, that's the most expensive thing we'll ever own. And of course, we want to make sure we have just the right people there to work with us. When, when COVID hit last year, uh, what, what impact did it have in your business? Did it all of a sudden go from cleaning to disinfecting? No, I didn't. I haven't. The, the business model really hasn't changed. Um, it's really there's no not much disinfecting. I, I did that before. Um, so and everything that I do, I include everything in my business, everything in my 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 service. Um, so I don't have to. When I go in and clean the carpet, I'm also disinfecting it. I did that before COVID, and I do it now. So. The only difference is I wear a mask, um, I wear gloves. Uh, sometimes they say, hey, this is a this is a free zone. You don't have to wear a mask and I can either wear one or not, but really nothing has changed. Just the amount of customers, that's it. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. You know, I hope that's a good thing. And I, and I know that you're just the type of guy, you're a hard working man. You've always worked hard regardless of what you've done. And I think it's fascinating to see how all the different components in your life have all led you to this moment of owning your very successful business, uh, taking care of people, everything you know from customer service, customer care, everything on that end, and the technical end where you dive right into YouTube and other channels to figure out how to be the best you can be has made you the success, and it's a great story. Thanks for sharing it with us today. We appreciate it. We wish you all the best moving forward. Take care. Thank you.